K2. What's up, my man? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool. So uh, if I wanted to download this or record this, how would we do that? Um, it should be in your sentence. Right, and right. it'll just, you could just take it. Yeah. And you would just take it to automatically download the meetings. Oh, I see it. Okay, hold on. It says, okay, I see it. So it has a, it has like a location to download it. Let me just uh, set it up real quick. Oh, cool. So you've been using Zoom a lot for um, any kind of meetings and stuff? Yeah. Um, I started the podcast thing and uh, okay. I interviewed uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Um, oh, uh, right, right. Yeah. And Hasim Rada. So I um, just use Zoom. It downloads it automatically. I get the audio. So it, it does it record both of us or just the, like, wh which part does it record? It'll record this whole meeting. Like, it'll have both of our bubbles and everything. Okay, hold on. Let me see. It says recording. Oh, no, wait. It does say recording. Let me just make sure. Like, I, I just want to make sure that something is showing up in that folder. Sounds good. Now, does it normally do that by default? Like, if, we ha if I had, like, Zoom... Uh, if if I had like a Zoom meeting for school or something like that, would it would it automatically record it? Yeah, as long as you got a uh, space. Okay, um, I'm not see I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a file where I set it to, but I, I'll just trust that. Uh, Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Choose a location for recorded files when meeting ends. And then, uh, just let, let's say I, I messed this up. Will you possibly have a copy of this? Yeah, I'll have it. Don't worry. Okay, cool. All <laughs> right. I, I, this is the first time for me. So I, the reason uh, why I want to do this is just, uh, I guess it'll help both of us, but mainly it's because uh, I know that you're helping out your community a lot. I saw, I, I, I keep up with your posts on Facebook and social media and whatnot. I think what you're doing is great you know like you're helping out underprivileged people you're teaching jujitsu for free at least for some people right 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 yeah um, so yeah go on yeah um i'll have uh something set up where people will want to donate to it because it still incurs bills okay um of course. so so if people want to donate like i'll shoot you a link and um if anybody wants to donate any denomination i'll, I'll happily take it okay um definitely definitely so uh I, I, yeah so basically I, I i'm you know i support that what you're doing uh, our organizations are obviously different like my thing is for homeless people but I, I wanted to just uh make a post not i mean all my posts have been just basically about like us going out and handing out food and stuff and whatnot um i'm trying to diversify a little bit so we like for example recently we printed out some shirts so that's some, you know, yeah, like I, I made some posts about that. Like if people were interested in getting some, um, we, we have like a sample batch and whatnot, but I also want to post about, you know, like reaching out to other people that are doing charitable things like yourself and, uh, you know, like help, help spread awareness, uh, help spread publicity. And just, uh, I think the interview is going to be cool too. So I'll just ask you a few questions. I'll just keep it kind of short, but, uh, you know, yeah, ready I'm, for that? I'm ready, man. Let's do it. All right, cool. So, uh, how'd you start? The, how'd you start your current um, program? You said it's at a. You, you said it's a club, right? Or I read that it's a club. You're right, right, at. right. So, I mean, I joined up with the people at uh, Dawson Safe Haven. Okay. Like they had space. I had the knowledge. Um, so, so we tested it out during the uh, 
they had a summer program um, and kids just needed an activity to do. Um, I acquired the mats. Uh, shout out to uh, Mike Stewart who provided the mats. Um, so we rolled out the mats. I taught people some self-defense jujitsu. The kids were into it. I said, cool, we'll, we'll keep it here as a staple of the Dawson Safe Haven Center. Um, so I cut up the mats myself, moved them upstairs, and I'm uh, proud to say we're kicking off on the uh, 22nd. Um, nice. Yeah. And um, is, that you, is that September 22nd? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. And is that something? So it sounds like what, how you're doing it is uh, donations are encouraged. People pay what they're able to if they want to. Yeah. Otherwise, they're able to just come and in, uh, benefit from your free charity, right? Like your, Definitely. Because, I mean, times were hard before, you know, COVID. Yeah. So now it's even tougher. So, like, and especially in the Black community, yeah. diabetes is at an all-time high. We're, right. we're leading the charge in heart disease. Right. We're leading the charge in obesity. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's time for those things to change. Yeah. When I was growing up, it was there wasn't a Planet Fitness on the corner. There wasn't mm-hmm. a Gold's Gym on the corner. I had to catch two buses in the dark to go learn jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, so to finally bring it home was something really big for me. Mm. You know? That's that's big. So I I guess that answers my next question. Like why why you're doing that? So um, just to uh, I guess continue. Uh, how, are are you teaching elsewhere? Like how many how many places are you teaching at right now? Well, I was currently teaching at Arisen Martial Arts. Yeah. Um, which started out as a Kali school that one of my first instructors was teaching at um, Rahilio Soto. Mm-hmm. Um, he retired, went to Florida, um, asked me if I wanted it. I said, certainly. <laughs> so I moved in there, um, started teaching Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and um, haven't looked back, but I definitely wanted to get back to my community. Mm-hmm. So, and like, there's not a lot of my people in Crofton, Maryland. Yeah. So I wanted to just bring it back home to East Baltimore. He's, okay. So just uh, that you teach out of that one location right now, and then you also teach uh, in East Baltimore, or you will be teaching in East Baltimore in, in this club program. And then do you also do you uh, have other than teaching? You also have your own training, right? Like you probably uh, it's with Noel Smith, right? You train right, right. Like I got my black belt last year from uh, mm-hmm. Noel Smith at uh, right. Alliance Glen Burning. Um, that was after. Um, after I left my, my first school at right, uh, yeah. Brown Control, um, I mean, I was just out there in the weeds looking for a new school. Um, Noel took me in with open arms, you know. Um, all my side projects, like the AdamsBrand.com, where I was, I produced my own geese, my own rash guards, my own shorts. Um, he, he had no problem with it, where my first instructor had a bit of an issue. Right. I remember um, we discussed we discussed that a little while ago. That that's uh, too bad to hear. Right, right, right. Like I brushed to Noel thinking he's gonna tell me get out too. He was like, "Hey, hang it up in here." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." Nice. <laughs> so um, so yeah, um, Noel, like that was just me going to Alliance was just planting my seed in good soil, mm. and now now that tree can grow. You know, mm-hmm. and I love it. That's good to hear. So do you uh, try to make it up and make it up there as well? Uh, I, I, like, I know you have a busy schedule. It sounds like you're, hand, you're juggling a lot of things. Like, do you also train there a lot or yeah. you know, like, what do you? Yeah, I try to make it twice a week. Um, oh, okay. It's about, it's about an hour away from me. So that's far. That's really yeah. far. Yeah. I'm trying to do two hours every day. It's, it's much, but the jujitsu community is pretty tight in mm-hmm. Baltimore. So like I'll cross train everywhere. Um, like shout out to um Jeff Mount at uh Foundation. Um, hey, that's been like, yeah. there whenever. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I covered the class for him. Like when do his back out. Um, I pop in at um Baltimore BJJ. Oh um, yeah, there. my old my old gym. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. 
Um, so you know about the open mats. Um, yeah. Uh, Rob Sullivan, cool guy. He's yep. like always come down. Um, before co before the world ended, um, I popped in at uh, Gamma with uh, Greg Lou. Oh, yep, I know him too. Um, that was awesome. I mean, I just love this tight knit community we have, man. That's cool. Awesome. All right, and then um, so prior to COVID, uh, I, well, I guess as you were coming up, uh, how did you make? how did you make it all happen? Cause like for me, uh, you know, as a student, I was training, trying to, you know, I, I, I had to go to school and at the same time train. I, I'm not sure if you had the same thing. Like, uh, I, I don't know how old you are actually. So that's one, uh, reason why, but for me, it was tough. I had to try and find a place that was willing to take me in for basically free training. Like I would clean the mats and stuff. Like how, uh, what did you do? Just curiously, like, are you working at the same time or, were you teaching for membership or, you know, did you just pay? Like, how did you make it happen? Well, for, for the most part, I w while I was training and yeah. coming up, I was working. There, there was a down point. Mm -hmm. um, like I got laid off. Okay. I was climbing towers at our Pinnacle Wireless. Doesn't oh. exist anymore. Um, so they went out of business and I was just, I was Dunsky. And, um, and on my videos on, uh, David Adams BJJ on Facebook, like I often reference like having thirteen dollars in my bank account and walking to the gym um, because I didn't want to buy the um, a monthly bus ticket, nor okay. could I afford it. Um, and I, I sat down and I talked to my instructor at the time. I was like, "Look, I can't pay. Like, like, is there anything I could do? I'll clean the windows. I'll mop, mop the mats. I'll sweep up." I was already teaching like in a substitute position. So I figured he saw that and was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, just keep training and keep teaching. And like eventually Tuesday nights were mine and I would teach at the gym, um, but no pay. I wasn't getting paid before, but like mm -hmm. I definitely wasn't getting paid now. Yeah. Um, and I just taught until like things turned around um, until I could pick myself back up um that's it cool that sounds good so it, it's like a little bit of charity for you too right like, oh yeah so, well sort of i mean not really because you're also providing your own knowledge like you were training people but that sounds cool did that influence you to uh do do this club thing like um that not, not i mean we should all like give back i think mm -hmm. like uh because like I think Denzel Washington said it was, there's no U-Hauls behind a hearse. Like you're not taking anything with you. Mm -hmm. So give back while you're on this earth. And a big issue in the black community is that all of our best people mm -hmm. get up and leave. And they think that's the cool thing to do. Mm. But what you're doing is you leave this great big hole of positive black image. Yeah. And it leaves and now our black boys don't get to see any positive black image. Mm. We don't get a positive black image in music. Mm -hmm. We don't get a positive black image on the TV. Mm. And now we can't even get it in our neighborhood. Right. You lock my father up or you killed him and not and not to make this bleak, but it's that's the reality. Gotcha. Um you locked him up or you killed him. Um so like, where is a black boy supposed to get a positive black image? Um, the successful ones leave, mm -hmm. never return. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to go away and learn something, but come back and bring it back. Mm -hmm. If you don't like squeegee boys, why aren't our black mechanics coming back and teaching these kids how to build an engine, how to take an engine apart and put it back together? Why don't they teach them how to change brake pads, change oil? And so I don't have to stand on the corner. I'm going to make $3,000 in a week rebuilding the carburetor because this mm -hmm. guy took a summer out of his schedule to teach me how. Yeah. And, and just in one summer, you could turn around the black community, but people have to come back first. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So. I, that, that's a good point. Mm. Um, 
that's cool. That's cool. So that's, that's the reason why that's, that's really awesome. Um, what about, okay. So actually the next thing I wanted to ask you about, it's a little unrelated. It's about COVID. So, you know, sure. jujitsu is the, probably the most close contact you can get. <laughs> and I'm sure, uh, at least oh, yeah. At, yeah, at the start of this whole pandemic, it seemed like, uh, to me, it seemed like, you know, basically everything shut down and the people that were the most screwed over were the jujitsu schools because they were like the customers were just, uh, or yeah, the, the customers, basically the members were all canceling. They're all afraid to die. They didn't know what was going on. I, I, I don't own a gym, so I'm not really sure what the numbers exactly were, but from what I hear, it was like half or more of the people had just straight up canceled or froze their contracts. Um, and then a lot of, a lot of the States just didn't allow gyms to be open and whatnot uh and then it's slowly kind of I, I don't know if it's back to normal even right now but i i from what i've seen on facebook and stuff I, i've seen that people are training at least the more uh the people that are more kind of uh dedicated and or involved like i see you know like for example for example people like yourself people like uh rob jeff like like the, like they run the gyms you know so they're all uh trying to make it happen so uh, I was going to ask you about that. As for myself, before we go on, I, I'm like I've not really been able to do any kind of group training. I've been studying for my pharmacy exam, but I train once a week with my girlfriend. So we, we like we, we've been social distancing this whole time. So uh, you know, there's not really any risk here. But that's how I've been kind of staying active. So it was once a week. We never missed, and every Sunday we just trained. So that's kind of my version. But uh, just curious about how you've been handling it. I mean, um, I'm one of those diehards. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, um, it did. It, COVID did hurt with like numbers. Yeah, like, I was teaching at a boxing gym okay. before this Dawson Club came about, and like, uh, and COVID hurt. Like, cause I just started that, and then COVID came around. So like, the membership was already small. Yeah, and then COVID hit, and they can't train. And they didn't want to pay before. Now they definitely don't want to pay you. And like, but that was around the board. Like gym owners were asking like, hey, if you want a gym to come back to keep paying. Like, and people, and the diehards would keep paying as long as they could mm -hmm. and then just fall away. Like, um, like me, as far as training, like I'm a diehard and, uh, it was a lot of little secret fight clubs going on or mm -hmm. around town. And uh, we kept training with precautions. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, what, would I, what was I doing? If they had a shower, I would shower right there. Um, disinfect myself. Come, come home. I open the door. I don't go anywhere. I'm wiping myself down and pretty much hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Down into the basement. Take everything off. Hit myself again. Wash that stuff wash yeah. my hands again and and then proceed into the house okay. um, so as far as training all the diehards kept training and mm -hmm. i'm glad i did because i got pan ams coming up uh in october oh okay so i'm so glad i didn't sit around and just yeah just do whatever yeah, not, not, not but kidding. you're lucky though that, yeah. you get, you're lucky you got the mats at the house you, your girlfriend can come choke you out yeah you know yeah you can stay sharp <laughs> yeah um no that's cool though and then what about what about overall so overall enrollment you said it kind of dropped off right yeah do you, do you see it picking back up like right now it seems like states in general are opening back up i like for example in new jersey i live in jersey right now um on the fourth so yesterday they just allowed movie theaters to reopen and uh, very limited indoor dining that it's like the first time we can do this so I guess I'm noticing the attitude is just like uh, everything is you know trying to get back to normal. Do you see more people kind of picking it picking back up, you know, like training again, stepping um, into the gym? Like, do you see the numbers going up at all or no? People are still a little gun shy. Okay. I mean, the diehards are back and they never left. Mm -hmm. But um, like the casuals and and the people that have a home situation, you know, maybe the wife told them. Hey, you're not going back. You know, we got a kid. Um, so they want to come back, but just can't. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I haven't seen the real pickup mm -hmm. just yet. I think everybody's still scared of those numbers. 
-hmm. that came out, but um, didn't actually do their own research and like realize that more people die from cigarettes than mm -hmm. COVID. Um, and they usually already have something that's putting them on their deathbed. Like, yeah. Like, also, like I think uh, most of the people that are training jujitsu are not really in the demographic that you know would probably die from COVID. I think, right. Right. right? Like, I mean, uh, yeah. We fight MRSA every night. Like we can't catch <laughs> COVID. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, right? That, we we can't catch it. We're immune. <laughs> immune. Yeah. <laughs> you you deal with uh, MRSA and ringworm and staff yeah. all day, every day, right? We'll fight it off every day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Never. Nice. Uh, that's cool, though. So yeah, that's, that, was, that was basically most of what I wanted to talk about. Um, it's cool. I, I wanted to basically get it on camera. You know, like the re I, I sensed the reason why you did what you did was pretty deep. You know, you had some personal ties to it. Uh, I think I think it's very cool what you're doing with the club. I think it's an ex a very good example you're setting. You know, you're, you're showing, you're leading by example. So that's, that's uh, I think something people can look up to and learn from. Hey. So it's very cool. I'm gonna post uh, about this, you know, I'll give you a shout out. And if there's anything else you wanna say, just, uh, you know, go ahead. Um, guys, uh, all my social media is David Adams BJJ, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, I barely post on TikTok, but, I am there. I, I heard that's getting banned, possibly banned by Donald Trump or something. I don't know. I heard something about that, but yeah, you know, he's he said he was building a wall, and okay. and Mexico was paying for it. So. <laughs> All right. Well, you got to keep an eye out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, no problem. All right, man. It's good good talking to you. A pleasure, pleasure. All right. Hey, be good, bro. Yep. Have a good one. Peace.